Spencer, you're muted. This is off to a hot one. <laughs> I got him. God damn. I just had a lot of thoughts that I wanted to get out right before we hopped on the live. It's What's always crack? Scotty Scheffler. It's always coming up Scheffler. It was always Scheffler. I right. like don't even know what to say, dude. The guy is so dominant right now in every big event. Like we talked about it on the pod before, the little events, who cares? He's like, I don't care. Big event comes around. He's like, oh, here we go. Real quick, this door, the window's open, and this door is just opening and closing at its own will. So if you see it back there, it's not a ghost. Oh, fingers crossed. Um, no, dude, five birdies in the last eight holes. I fucking hate this guy. I cannot stand watching this dude continue to do what he's doing. It's just so bullshit. Like, how is he this much better than everybody else? I, I think that's the crazy part about it is when you watch him play, like, obviously he gets knocked for not being a great putter, but the dude also doesn't three putt. So if he ever is on the green, I think at the players, he hadn't three putted in like four tournaments and we'll ended up winning that one. And he, oh, yeah, we wish his wife would have went into labor at some point. Let's talk a little bit about that. First of all, they, they kind of overblew that whole thing. That thing was all overblown this whole week. Well, because real quick, what was even funnier was, them bringing up Sam Burns' wife going into labor, like he could have fucking left after Thursday. He was, <laughs> yeah, cooked. he didn't need to. He, he didn't even need to tee it up Friday. Friday. Don't no concern there. Um, but yeah, also the fact that Scotty's wife's name is Meredith, like that's such little house on the prairie bullshit. That Scotty Scheffler is just like the most annoying, innocent Texas fucking. Actually, he's from here in new jersey i guess and they moved out to texas probably because his parents didn't want any state income tax so they they moved him out to texas and that's where he ended up but uh everything about scotty is just so fucking blah like what it can you remember in recent time in any sport a superstar being so boring like and everybody's gonna say nicole Jokic. Jokic is not even bore this boring like he has good quotes he says funny things you want to call him boring. He is like fucking, he's like a movie star compared to this guy. Scotty Scheffler is the most wet blanket motherfucker I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And like I said, I think the whole pregnant wife got a little overblown this week. She's two weeks out. It was going to be fine the whole time. But my question to you is, it, do you actually, if you were put in that same position, how would you feel? Because my stance on it is first masters, second kid. I would have been out first kid, second masters. I would have probably been like, I, I, when I'm saying I would have been out, I would have been at the tournament, but yeah. second kid, first masters. No, wait, now I'm fucking confusing myself. Yeah. Second kid, first masters. I think I, gotta, I, I would definitely be not leaving the masters. But first kid, second Masters, he's already won it. I think he would have left, and that's fine. Um, I think says, there's a chance to win only so many Masters. You can pump kids into your wife like Philip Rivers, like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> you can have 12 of those things. Nobody's winning 12 Masters. So uh, I don't the, care when, when it happens, what time it happens, if it's the first or the 12th, I would be playing golf. <laughs> but, and I would hope. You would think his wife, you know, what kind of first world problem where like, it, and I know I sound like a douchebag saying it, but he, he would turn down almost $4 million. Like there's nobody, there's, there's maybe like a thousand people in the entire world that would do that to turn down almost $4 million to be there for the birth of your kid. And I understand family. I'm all about family myself. But when you've made $50 million in your career, just on the course, not including probably $100 million in, in uh, you know, sponsorships and TV deals and all this, which it's shocking they can market this guy because he's so fucking boring. But uh, he has such a, yeah, he's made $45 million over the last two years. Shout out Jacques in the chat. Um, yeah, that's also a reason, though, I'd be out. Like, 
No, you I. Know, it's you, but it's, you, when you have a kid, it's a different scenario. Fucking birdie on sixteen, dude. He's a machine. Do you think that Meredith would be happy with him if he didn't leave? He, you, the amount of shit he'd be catching for the rest of his fucking life. I can't even imagine missing the birth of my child. Imagine having a better rebuttal than just holding up a green jacket and buying your wife whatever the fuck she wants. <laughs> And being like, here, I'm sorry, I missed it. Like, there, there's been way worse reasons dudes have missed their the birth of their children. And yeah, don't like, wrong, like Scotty, I get it, but he, just him saying that he would leave and like crying about it, out of pocket for me. Yeah, the one thing I, you know, we thought we were gonna have uh, an intense Masters coming down the stretch. Was pretty intense there after Aubert made the putt on nine. They were all at seven. But the the kind of unfortunate part is is the guys that were chasing him completely faltered. Now he making all these birdies. I, I think he's made six birdies in the last nine holes. Now it kind of feels like he won the Masters a little bit, getting from starting the day at seven to getting to eleven under par and clearing the field by four. I feel a little better about that in terms of like oh, I wish Obear could have done this, or I wish Morikawa could have done this. I mean, they would have had to put together a really good round. So this was a combination. A lot of majors, it's like, oh, this guy just dominates and nobody can catch him, or, oh, everybody faltered. And it felt like everybody was faltering there for a while, and, and that's still kind of how it ended up being. Didn't put the pressure on Scotty Scheffler, but Obear rinsing it at 11. I think Morikawa rinsed it at 11. Uh, there was actually Max a... There was actually a Ben Hogan quote that I just saw on Twitter that said, if you see me on the green on in two on 11, I miss hit my second shot. So that just goes to show you how to play that shot and how to play that golf course. And he, I don't know, dude, just watching him is insane because it's so, um, yeah, ball striking robot is exactly what he is. He's the crazy thing is his swing is so unorthodox. Nobody does what he can do. But he's also, I think one of the things that makes him so boring in terms of on the golf course, we can talk about boring and he is off the golf course, whatever. You know, he's definitely not definitely not a guy that we would just pair up with on a random Sunday foursome. Well, but yeah, I don't want to get my fucking ass kicked. <laughs> well, yeah, but on the golf course, he's so boring because he doesn't he's not like your Jordan Spieth or whatever. I know you fucking love that guy, but I'm just making a making a comparison here. He's, he wasn't hitting it around all day today and making it interesting. Like he's just fairway green, fairway green. Fairway, well, he's I, not hitting it in the I trees. will say, I will say hit the first part of his round looked a little bit shaky. He only hit, I think three of the first six or seven greens um, and got up and down when he needed to. He had a few, um, you know, tough shots here and there, but ultimately he turned it on like nobody else did. Like, look at this round he's putting together. Just, that coming from him and making these putts, like everybody remembers the putts he misses. Look at the putts he's made in the last nine holes. It's it, the shot on nine is what really changed it for me. When he almost hold it out from the fairway, I was like, okay, this shit's cooked. And yeah. I actually, you mentioned uh, the the shot on eleven. I turned to Missy before Scotty hit a shot, and. Uh, Colin had just rinsed his approach. I was like, Scotty Scheffler would rather chop his own balls off than hit this ball left. Like he is, there's no chance in hell he misses this left, especially when you have wind in and off the right. You're going to aim it probably five, 10 yards right of the green. If you hit it straight, you hit it straight. If the wind takes it, whatever. But if you puke on it, you're probably still catching that left edge of the green. Like there was absolutely zero chance he would have rather putted it than hit it left in the water. And that's where, you know, Colin Morikawa getting a little overly aggressive and same with Aubert. But at the same time, like it is so tough because Scotty really doesn't make mistakes. He hasn't shot an over par final round in like, I think like a year and a half or something. It's insane. Um, so yeah, he shot like one over par round period in the last year and a half, because it was a big deal when the golf channel or PGA tour Twitter mushed him. I think it was two weeks ago 
and said he hasn't shot an under par, over par round in so long. And then the next round he goes out, I think it was on a Saturday and shot one or two over, but his short game is also insane too. I saw a stat that he hit as many greens in the first three rounds as VJ Singh. And he's leading the tournament. And VJ Singh is just barely beating Tiger Woods. Wait, real quick. I had this in the notes. VJ Singh, I think, wore hokas the entire round. You know, like those, those running shoes that have like the three inch sole on him. I just wants like, the comfort. I, I don't blame him. I mean, maybe Tiger should fucking switch to some sort of walking shoe or whatever. Um, real quick, a few things on Tiger. So he finished DFL, correct? If I'm not mistaken, um, DFL of making the cut. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. He made the cut, finished DFL, but I will say up until yesterday, um, I actually didn't mind the coverage of him at all. Like they showed plenty of other shots. Uh, you know, we got to watch pretty much everybody. Um, but then Saturday it became like, you're showing tiger shoot 85, and he's just hobbling around, fucking hacking it all over the joint, hitting every single part of that property. It's like, we don't need to see this. He's 20 shots behind the lead. Um, so it got a little excessive Saturday. Sunday ended up being fine because, you know, he just got off the course early enough. But overall, it, it, there's been years where it's worse. Um, <clears throat> and maybe just because they knew he wasn't going to contend. I mean, he's played three competitive or three tournaments in the last three years, I want to say. So obviously he's not, uh, not playing in a lot of events lately, but, um, what did you think of tiger's finish this week? His finish was awful, but I actually felt like he belonged to those first couple of days. And when you look well, he's at tiger fucking woods, dude, of course, well, still belongs like he he's this is not just a fucking charity event and him just playing because he's the best golfer of all time like he actually was competing and when you look at the names of the guys that missed the cut the victor hovlins the wyndham clarks and realize that tiger went out and made the cut i thought that was i thought making the cut would be a win for him starting the week and i was still impressed you know other than like you said saturday was a rough day but i other you can't it's not the same tiger woods like it, he has the same name it's the same you know body mostly but he's not the same guy and you can't anticipate him being the same guy so for no. what tiger woods is now making this cut was a huge victory and he'll never say that but that's the reality of the situation 100 percent agree um but yeah at the same time i mean he it, it he's won the masters enough to feel like he can always come out here and compete. Like, I don't think he will ever tee it up at Augusta and not think that he's, you know, in the hunt, quote unquote. Well, yeah, he's, he's got that mentality. It's like Tom, the Tom Brady mentality where you can never like you, if you're, if he's competing in something, he want he's winning. Yeah. Um, real quick, let's let's talk about our bets and the Bet365 app. You can use the code ALLCITY when you sign up. Choose between two different bets of the first bet safety net of $1,000 or betting $5 to get $150 when you sign up with that code. We bet each ways in golf. Of course, a little short this week. I actually did have a top 12, Ty Tyrrell Hatton, uh, finished T9, uh, and so he is firmly in the money. I'll have to check the Bet365 app and see what that paid out with uh, uh, that top 12 bet. But we do our all of our betting through the Bet365 app. They make it super easy for the each ways in golf. You click next to the player's name. You get a little bit on him winning. It doubles your bet, and then you get the rest on them placing. Whatever you select, 1 through 5, 8, 10, 12, we've gone to 12. It helped us out this week. Uh, Tyrrell Hatton was fully in it. And, uh, yeah, just use that code all city when you sign up at bet three, six, five, and you get two different offers. Also want to tell you about our friends at Coors light. Of course, when you need a moment to chill, as you can see the sign behind me, Coors light is by far the best beer. I had a bunch of them down in South Carolina this past week. I was just crushing Coors lattes. Um, I apparently leaving the wedding Friday night, got home. Do not remember getting home. I didn't drive, obviously, but I went to the fridge and tried to open another Coors Light, and I found it like 80% drink or 20% drink the next morning on the nightstand. 
So didn't get through that one. RIP to that Coors Light. But I was drinking a ton of Coors Lights. It's the best beer when you need to just chill. Um, I wish Scotty Scheffler may have drinking a few of those, thrown it off, thrown him off his game on this back nine. What do you think? We sneak a few in that water bottle. 100%. My actual best like tournament round of golf. I had had multiple Coors Lights. I, I got hammered on Coors Lights tonight before responsibly. And then I started to like come down a little bit on the turn. I went and drank a few Coors Lights at my car. That Coors Light has literally produced my best round of tournament golf I've ever played. So, so shout out to Coors Light. You can get Coors Light delivered to your door with Instacart. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. All right, let's talk about some other storylines from the week. Of course, we know Scotty's on seven. Wait, I I know you want to talk about storylines. The biggest storyline, and I know RK is sitting next to you, is our Calcutta that we participated in. Oh, Uh, absolutely. Let's get into that because that was the most electric start to a Masters week we've ever had. I have not been more let down by that and by anything like that in fucking probably years. Like I had a big bet on the Eagles to win the Super Bowl when they lost to the Chiefs uh, two years ago, and it's probably been since that that uh, someone has ripped my heart out. So Ryan Fox, first off, Ryan Fox can go shit in his hand. Um, he at one point yesterday was four under par, which right now would be T four. Um, that would have paid us probably what around three thousand dollars something like that and instead i think he finished seven over par so he finished the last 27 holes like 11 over par um makes me fucking sick jock ted scott entering top 10 in earnings uh this for the year as a looper is hilarious yeah he's made more money than almost everybody else on tour Hook him, Greg, go fuck yourself. I hope the Cowboys win six games this year. Um, I hate, I just don't like Scotty Scheffler. Like there's no, nobody's going to be, everyone always asks me like, why don't you like him? I'm like, what is there to like? Like he's good at golf. That's where it ends. He's very, very, very good at golf, but the personality is not there. It's very corny. It's very like cheesy to me. And he, I, he just doesn't care. Like, I know he doesn't care, and that's what pisses me off. Like, care a little bit more what other people think, Scotty. For the sake of everybody in the golf world, care a little bit more what I think of you, please. Well, he was starting to show a little emotion in other tournaments. I mean, he just missed a birdie putt on 17 to go up by a full five strokes and kind of did like a little squat to his knees. So clearly yeah. there's some emotion there. Definitely emotion. Um, So real quick. This Calcutta, we had Chris Kirk. Um, we had which ended up being our highest finisher in Ryan Fox. And basically those two dudes uh carried us, carried somewhat, you know, our our hopes and dreams into the final round. And uh Chris Kirk actually ended up doing okay. Um, but Ryan Fox just broke me down. Like I was so I was so fucking hurt. I've never a a few things on the broadcast. I never want to see holes four five and six at Augusta ever again. I could not care any less. And the the fact that they choose to highlight four, five and six when one, two and three are all very gettable, like kind of, uh, you know, round changing types of holes where if you get off on a hot start, they don't highlight one, two, and three. They highlight two hard par threes and a really hard par four. Like if you walked out of there with birdie on five, you did something wrong. Like you did not intend to make birdie and same with four and six, the par threes. So I thought that was fucking stupid. Obviously they got to highlight amen corner. They got to highlight uh 15, 16, like those are big holes, but I think two, is probably the most underrated hole on the course for watching like both. uh, We had Kurt Kitayama in our, in our Calcutta. He makes Eagle there today. Ryan Fox made Eagle there today. Uh, Or no, Fox didn't. uh, No, Fox did. Fox did. Fox made Eagle there as well as Minwoo Lee made Eagle there. So we had three of our five 
players make Eagle there. And just so this Calcutta, obviously where you're, you know, gambling and, and auctioning on players. So we, we went a little smaller and got a lot of guys like the Ryan Fox, like Ryan Fox, Chris Kirk. I think we had Min Woo Lee. We had um, Harris English and we had Nick Taylor. So all guys at like lower prices. Emiliano Grillo. Good about. And, and then there was also a payout for worst player to make the cut. So Kurt Kitayama was right in the running for that starting today. Eagles too, and ends up shooting like the second lowest round of the entire day, which is great. You're 10 over and you fire 68. Congratulations. Piss me right off. But yeah, it was, it was electric most of the tournament because although it was, it drove me nuts towards the end, Ryan Fox started out birdie, 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 two separate days during the event. He, he was the first round leader for at least four or five holes on Thursday, which is also a separate payout. So yeah, it, it changed my, my mind on a few of those players and they may be just blacklisted all in all together at this point. I'm never going to speak of those guys again. Yeah, no, I mean, Ryan Fox was ultimately the one because like Nick Taylor, we never really had hope. I, I hand up, I fucked up Jim Calhoun complete whiff on Nick Taylor. Uh, I thought he had a outside chance at making a run this weekend Didn't even make it to the weekend played like dog shit. He just did not look like he was with it Thursday or Friday. He was, you know, kind of out of it mentally. Um, but Ryan Fox was ultimately the one that hurt the most because he's the kind of dude that, you know, isn't meant to contend at a place like this. Um, but he was doing it and I was like, could we have like the Cinderella like fourth or fifth place run? Cause for a little bit more background, the purse was almost 60 grand guys like Scotty Scheffler went for over $4,000 and this is like real money. This isn't fake monopoly fucking money. <laughs> five grand. He went this, up for over five grand. Did Scotty for go for over five? Well, yeah, but now that guy just invested five to win 22 or 30. 20, no, 20, I think he made 20. 22. That makes me fucking sick. If if you could guarantee me a four X return, I would have bought Scotty for five grand myself. So, you know, hindsight is obviously 2020 and that's gambling. Um, but we ultimately we spent less than we spent about one percent of the entire purse, and we had five dudes make the cut. So we actually did pretty well. It was just nobody could get like enough of a run going because it, it got out of hand to the point where like Wyndham Clark went for over three grand. Uh Max Homo went for over three grand. Um Justin Thomas went for fourteen hundred dollars. Yeah. Talk about a big fucking waste of money. Speaking of waste of money, where Mitchell was right, uh Jordan Spieth shits down his leg on Friday, misses the cut. I was right about that. Rory basically should have missed the cut. He had no no point playing the weekend. He wasn't in contention. So everybody's saying that Rory and Jordan Spieth had a shot at the Masters. Clearly wrong. Like these dudes can't just turn it on when they feel like it. When they're playing bad golf, they're clearly just playing bad golf. Like this isn't, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to say it, but like it's not an effort thing. It's not like the NBA you can't just turn it on and all of a sudden you're all world again. Like when you're playing bad golf, you're playing fucking bad golf. So Jordan Spieth, Rory McIlroy, I was right on that. Um, I obviously had a couple of wrong takes too, but that's uh, not above me by any means. So I'll, I'll eat those wrong takes, take my right takes. Xander Shoffley hung in there. Um, he didn't contend contend, but he was at the top of everybody's boards. Uh, didn't Hideki Matsuyama miss the cut as well? No, he made the cut, but was like a very low finisher of making the cut. Okay. So he, he actually had one of the better rounds to, or he ended up shooting two over today, seven over for the tournament T38. It just makes me sick how close, like even par for the tournament was top 10. Yep. Which is insane. And so let's talk about the golf course a little bit. Because Friday, Bryson goes out and shoots seven under par. Thir We're uh, like, Thursday, right? I'm sorry, Thursday. Did I say Friday? Yeah. Yes, Thursday, Bryson goes out, shoots seven under. We're like, holy shit, is this going to be a birdie fest? Because he actually, and I misread the weather. I'm not a fucking, I'm not, 
I can't control the weather, Jackie. Um, I thought that the weather was coming in Thursday afternoon. Then they say the weather's Thursday morning. So then I'm like, okay, the afternoon guys have the advantage. He goes out relatively later on Thursday because all the weather was in the morning. Shoot 65. I'm like, holy shit, this guy. I honestly, there was a point like in the middle of Friday where I thought Bryson was running away with this event. I'm not that stupid to think that, but I thought Bryson was doing everything right. Um, and then clearly he faltered down the stretch. His putting was not very good, which is no surprise. But real quick, let's talk about Bryson's. I, I know I'm just jumping from subject to subject here. It's what I do best. What did you think of Bryson's? uh iron situation that was insanity well hearing about it it's insane that they would like pre-approve an iron that he built right before the event and allow him to play those like i don't know the legality of all that and how that works if you just have a usga person on site or you know you're you're going through the whole process and not knowing as he's 40 printing these not knowing if it's going to be legal or not and then somebody just says okay you know this feels like one of those back alley deals where he got somebody with some gave somebody a, an under the under the table handshake and then ends up getting these irons approved right before the week starts kind of insane to think that a club with a little bit of bulge on the face so the off center hits don't go as off center just got approved randomly this week and it's never going to be in production it's never going to no one else is ever going to play them but he was able to play him in the biggest event of the year. Yeah. Like obviously I've talked about this on the podcast before, but Bryson, I I'm not a fan of his by any means. Um, he is good for golf though. Like when people were buzzing about his irons, buzzing about him picking up the, the fucking sign on the golf course yesterday, so many different things. Like he was in the background with people like throwing them one way, trying to move them out of the way behind the hole he is very, very talked about on the internet, but have you ever seen a dude that has so much time? Like we talked about tinkers just a few weeks ago on the PGA tour and in just everyday golf. Have you ever heard the level of tinkering get so far to where you like build your own irons that think are going to benefit you? Um, because of, and, and that's the other thing too, is the USGA has such strict regulations on these clubs that you can act like you're getting away with something, but they're not, you're not. And if you are, then you're just making the USGA look like complete fucking idiots because they shouldn't be allowing this stuff. You know what I mean? It's either pretty regular and completely overblown or the USGA is that stupid that they allow him to play clubs that he just built last week. And like you said, just slides it under the table and be like, Hey, I'm playing these irons. Like what? imagine a scenario where he is like in contention and they come out and like, look at his golf clubs and DQ him. Like he's playing a fucking 540 CC John Daly driver out there or some shit. Yeah, it, it was a wild situation, but Bryson is good for the golf world in terms of he's a superstar that everybody loves to hate and for very good reason, but definitely has his middle name has to be Tinker. Because I've, as much as we've seen, you know, working at courses over the years and how many players that are not even good, I mean, they're, they think they're good, but in the real scale of golf, they're not any good at all. They're messing with their clubs. They're buying new clubs. They're changing lofts. They're changing their grips. They're adding tape under the grips, doing all this stuff. I can only imagine what, like, I think, is he still Cobra? Like what the Cobra people have to deal with, with him. That's well, like no, gotta be the most remember, annoying thing on the planet. I think years ago, Cobra like broke it off with him because they didn't want to put up with his shit anymore. They they legitimately couldn't um, accommodate his. Uh, needs. We got a little connection here. Um, I'm just gonna filibuster here for Mitchell for a second. Wait, am I am I back? You're what, back. Well, okay. What I was like, what's going on here? I I, I didn't have a connection error on my side, but. Um, I cope. I think he left Cobra, um, because he, or they basically like forced him out because they didn't want to deal with his shit anymore. Like he could not be a kind that doesn't surprise me. 
he could not be accommodated by what they had to offer because he was trying to build new things. He wanted this, this way, this, that way. Like he is the ultimate dude who thinks he's the smartest guy in the room because he's got money. So he automatically just thinks he's the smartest dude. And he probably has a bunch of yes men around him being like, Oh yeah, that's a great idea. Oh yeah. Do this. Like I guarantee you, nobody's told Bryson no in the last four or five years. And if they have, then he's just left and gone in a different direction. So Bryson. Yeah. So oh, go ahead. I was just going to say the uh, now that it's, pretty much final the calcutta ludwig obert went for 1065 but the payout is going to be eleven thousand six hundred and eighteen dollars so 10x return basically on uh on ludwig that is a very very good return um this dude has all the all the makings of a an all-time good golf game um he just he's similar to scotty in the way where it just feels like he doesn't do a whole lot wrong i don't really know where he lost strokes this week playing in his first masters and him um to finish second like is insane i really i didn't want to bid on him because you know the whole stigma around first time masters players not finishing you know not winning um it is a very real thing so i just figured he was going to struggle this week but apparently inside info helps because i guess one of his donors at texas tech brought his entire team out here uh, his freshman year of college, like five years ago. So he's actually played multiple rounds at Augusta prior to this week, which obviously helps. I mean, I don't know if he was mapping it like he was going to play in the Masters, but being familiar with the piece of property, familiar with the greens, that type of thing. And just from a comfortability factor, I think that definitely made a difference for him this week. Well, yeah, he looked super comfortable and – I, I know you can kind of relate to this. Does Ludwig Obert ever stop fucking eating? <laughs> I mean, the camera like four You're such a fucking times, dickhead. The um, camera like four different times today. He gets the cliff bar and knocked out of his hand after he makes the birdie on nine by the patron. They catch him on 14 after he hits a tee shot. He's got a full sandwich in his mouth. I, I swear to God, this dude's eating between every golf shot the entire dude, round. Honestly, like with the amount of calories you're burning during golf, I don't think people understand really like because you have to keep your mental sharp like you can't just black out when you're playing golf like it's not basketball it's not football whatever you legitimately need to eat during golf because you and all, a lot of these guys have gone as far as wearing like blood sugar monitors on them and everything like that because they want to stay right mentally more than anything it's not really physically it's me it, it is physical, but it's just as much mental as it is physical. So uh, did you see, speaking of Ludwig eating, uh, he was given everybody like daps walking up nine and he had a power bar in his hand and one of the dudes knocked it out of his hand. Did you see this? Yeah, I just said that if you were listening to me. I was kind of tuning you out a little <laughs> bit. Um, but yeah, the guy knocked the power bar out of his hand. He was just chill about it. Do you yeah. go? Do you go well, he, pick it up? He kind of like gave him a look. He was like, what the fuck, dude? And it was actually pretty funny, but it just goes to show you like how chill. I don't think anybody expected Ludwig to win this week. And I think he's the, the kind of chill type of dude where he didn't really come into this week with expectations. Um, with it being his first masters, he will definitely have those expectations on him next year after finishing second this year. But uh, he just had that kind of chill, like playing with the house's money type of mentality where he's like, dude, this is all gravy. Like he's going to make a couple mil this week, uh, playing in his first masters. He gets great experience and I know he's going to win majors. Like I, I would say he's just by the looks of him it, and we can clip this, but I think he'll win three to four majors in his career. Probably. Yeah. I, I think honestly that he, other than Scotty, just because of who Scotty is. Like if you had to just blind draw, you know how they always come out with odds after the Super Bowl and it's like odds to win next year's Super Bowl. And it's like always the guy that just won it. Well, Ludwig Obert might be the favorite at yeah. this point. Yeah. He is, he's already going to be, I bet he's going to be at least um, top five in odds for the PGA come next month. And then you go to the U S open. I mean, he just, there's really no holes in his game to the point where uh, I think that he's, he's definitely, he could win a major later this year. 
and this could kind of just be his testing ground, you know, to ultimately win later this year and win in the future. But uh, I definitely, it felt like he had that kind of mentality where it was just not a care in the world type of shit. Um, we just saw Colin Morikawa made bogey on 18. He finishes at minus four. And what a grind, like for everybody besides Scotty Scheffler and Ludwig Bear, nobody finished more than four under par. So uh, there was legitimately like it, it felt like for stretches of this week and weekend, Max was playing this like a U.S. Open. Like Max was just trying to make pars and ultimately it worked out for him. He ends up shooting four under. He's tied for third in the event. Um, he obviously didn't walk away with the win, but uh, he was playing to make par everywhere. All right. And Scotty Scheffler is officially your master's champion. What a fucking four shot win for him. Um, we just thought so, we were, so dominant. We thought we were going to finally have a good one. He just goes out, fires 68. I think that was the second low round of the day. Tom Kim shot 66, but I don't think anybody else was lower than 68. His yeah. caddy is just that guy is rolling in it. He's huh. making more than, I mean, they'll update the money list, but he probably took home another three thirty three thousand. Jesus Christ, $360,000, give or take some taxes, depending upon, you know, what George's tax rate is, but what he's keeping under the table. Just um, so yeah, now, I mean, Ted Scott has now been on the bag for four masters because he was on uh, Bubba's for both. And now he's on Scotty's for both. By the way, Scotty Shuffler's hairline is even worse than mine is. Um, so he, he has a great beard, but his hairline is fucking rough. The you front is disappearing, but I have no room to say anything. Well, like I've, I've got more up top than he does. And that's saying something because it's. Oh God, there, I can't lean my head too far forward or you'll see it all. Uh, but Scotty just, uh, he, he is a grandpa in a 27 year old's body. Like there's, there's no other, I just see him going home and drinking a sweet tea and sitting on his fucking porch in a rocking chair with Meredith and their first child. He's built to be like 55, 60 years old. Oh yeah. Well, he's, he's now got a green jacket for himself and a green jacket for his kid. Have they said if this kid's a girl or a boy yet? Um, I don't know. Do know? I, I would assume they don't know. They want it to be like 1800 style where they just find out when it comes out. Scotty Scheffler jr. 2042 masters. That, 2045. Maybe. Scotty Scheffler's unborn child is already a better ball striker than I am. <laughs> Man yeah. or a woman. just, Pops out just striking it fucking so crispy. Absolute um, clinic. Um, let's get to some other storylines from the week. One of them was just how tough this Masters played. I think this, just by my eye, is one of the like highest scoring final round or final groups and rounds. Like nobody usually is just sitting at four under and and top fiving, top three, T three at that point. Scotty being at eleven under is like a respectable score. But I feel like normally you come down the stretch on Sunday, it's like 13, 14. I think a lot of my pools, I had, you know, 17 under winning it. So it, it's, it was definitely tougher. And Shane Lowry actually made a hilarious comment on um, Akshay Batia and the wind. And he, Shane Lowry said, yeah, the wind is just blowing. I can't imagine what it was doing to Akshay. It was blowing me around this place. He nearly got blown away. <laughs> to be honest, it's just the hardest part out there is putting. The hardest part out there on the on the green is to hole putts. So I've got 10 feet down the hill on 18. One of the easiest putts you can get. I said to Darren, I've hit this putt. I know what this putt does. It never moves as much as you think. I still couldn't manage to hit a good putt and hole it. It's just hard. And that's just Augusta for you. Like, no you just matter read what. That like a third grader. Well, dude, it's hard. It's on my phone. It's sideways. Like, fuck why it. was your phone sideways? Just fucking d just deal with it. Okay. It sounded, I hit the putt. I've hit this putt before. I'm trying to not unplug my fucking mic. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. I've already unplugged it three oh, times. Shit. Wow. Well, you need to get it together. Um, no, the wind was insane. I mean, we saw the wind blowing out of the bunker uh yesterday afternoon yesterday morning the wind was crazy like who would have thought if 
you would have told Bryson DeChambeau after Thursday when you shoot 65, just tell him shoot even par the next three days and you'll finish second. Like who would have thought about that in hindsight? And that is the crazy thing. Ultimately is he fires that round Thursday and ultimately goes backwards to the point where he wasn't even top five. Um, and obviously he has struggles over the weekend. Like, like everybody did, but today was honestly relatively gettable. And I don't really know. I mean, everything was pretty firm, but it felt like there was rounds out there to be had. Um, and I mean, 68, 66 from Tom Kim, uh, but not really like super low rounds. Like we've seen in years past at Augusta where dudes are going out there shooting 64, 63, um, and I do, I do like a tougher challenge like this, but it really does feel like with Scotty Scheffler in the field, it takes more guys out of contention because there's more guys that can go low. Um, you know, obviously the PJ tour is full of very talented dudes, but when you have to be this precise with your ball striking and your short game, um, it really just narrows it down to like Scotty on the PJ tour. There's nobody that hits the ball as well as he does. There's nobody that chips it like he does really like on the PGA tour. Um, and realistically, when you think about it, your putting doesn't have to be that good. If your iron play is really fucking good and your short game is very good as well, where you're chipping it within a couple of feet. Like, I mean, I don't think he made that many feet of putts today besides uh, wh where he made one like, 10 footer for birdie. Uh, but other than that, he had tap in birdies these last few holes. I mean, he was making, you know, five footers and in for birdie. Like it wasn't like he was making everything he looked at by any means. So he just hit it so fucking good. And when he didn't hit it good, he was chipping it close. So, yeah. Well, is it just me too? Or, you know, in relation to the higher scores at the overall tournament, I know the back nine, was significantly harder than the front nine. And I feel like it's not been that way. Am I wrong? Like, I feel like 13 and 15 are like guaranteed birdie holes. And then, you know, 10 and 11 are obviously tough holes. 12 is an extremely tough hole, which did you see, by the way, Chris Kirk, our boy in the Calcutta, when he got to 12 today, we were watching him on Amen Corner. He made birdie all three days at 12 going into Sunday. <laughs> That's fucking Ooh, insane. Really? Holy shit. Yeah. But on, I just caught this stat on Thursday. On Thursday as a group, so all the all 89 players that were in the Masters, the front nine, they were a collective minus four. The back nine, they were a collective plus 74. Holy And shit. so I'd like to see what the, you know, the discrepancy is over the entire event. But even our boy Brian Harmon shot 47 on the back nine. I mean, that shit was hard. Fucking... Kurt Kitayama was kind of in it until he tripled 17. It felt like 17, 18. I mean, even Hatton today, he finishes in the top 12 for me. I actually just got the bet three, six, five notification. Uh, my bet returned seven times what I, what I put out. So as a collective group, we were even on the masters. So you're welcome Love for my that. top, my Thank top 12 you. pick, uh, in Tyrrell Hatton, but it, the back nine just killed people. He made bogey on eight, 17 and 18 today, which I thought was going to pull him out of the top 10, but then it seemed like everybody else kind of did too. Well, what I will say is the firmness of the greens definitely comes more into play um, with the, the holes on the back nine, like with 12 being as firm as it is, uh, you know, Max landed his ball, maybe a foot long of the green on 12 and it bounces up into the fucking into the vines up there, like unplayable. Um, if you were coming in with a longer club on 15, it was going over the green and they made it borderline impossible with this pin today to get up and down from behind the green. So there were so many things. Um, 12 was weird. Like I don't, I know there was a little bit of obviously wind, but I felt like there was a lot of dudes that could have gone for it in two easily and just didn't like, I mean, Chris Kirk had two fifty in today. Are you talking 13? Oh yes. I'm sorry. 13, not, not the par three. I'm talking 13. Um, there were so many more dudes that could have gone for it on 13 and just laid it up when it was so tough to wedge it close. Like, but at the same time, there's really no, if you don't hit the green, there's nowhere for it to go 
especially with how firm it was this week. If you miss it left, it's kicking up into the bunkers, up into the hill, or if you miss it right, it's kicking down in the water. So you had to be so precise with your ball striking. Obviously, same with 12, with it being as skinny as it is, you have to control your distance so well. Um, and then 17, tough pin placement, 16, same thing. I mean, 16, I don't feel like Chris Kirk, that hole was built for him. He hits a sling draw, like you land it anywhere. I don't know why these guys overthink that hole where aim five yards right of it and just hit it. If you tug it, it's at the hole. If you hit it straight, it's at the hole. Like, I guess if you miss it right, I, I get it, whatever. But um, just the, the firmness overall of the entire golf course is what really put a constraint on dudes firing at pins, trying to make birdies. They were playing a little bit more defensively um, in a lot of cases this week, just because of how firm everything was. Oh, is Spencer frozen? Uh, he is still frozen. He may be back. Um, but yes, so they're, they're interviewing Ludwig now. Oh, I am by myself. Okay. Uh, Ludwig is now. Me? Oh, Hey Marissa. Um, we had some connection issues, I assume. I'll just pretend like I know what I'm saying. Okay, perfect. Um, so they're now, oh, Spencer's back. We're back. I was getting nothing. It was oh, just, yeah. just, just listening to you filibuster. I, I was trying to filibuster a little bit. I don't think that word is being used correctly, but, um, I don't really care. Uh, Ludwig, did you notice a few times throughout the day? He gives like that look, like that wide eyed. He's like, he, 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 fe I think he felt like he got away with quite a few things where, uh, he was like, holy shit, that could have been bad. And finally on 11, it did get bad for him when he yeah. chipped that one in the water. But he made that face a few times where he's like, holy. yeah, when he made, when he made that putt on nine, he was like, oh my God, that, that was, and he, that was he like, could have been getting the wedge out of the bag after that putt. A hundred percent. Well, what's funny going back to nine and just talking about that shot, Scotty Scheffler hit, which is kind of the shot of the tournament. Uh, me and RK are sitting here and he goes, we just had watched, I think Aberg and Morikawa. No, he was with Aberg and Homa uh, hit their shots into nine. They're both like nine. That's another tough hole. They, all these guys have like 90 yards in 80, 90 yards in, and they're not hitting it anywhere close. And RK goes, yeah, I feel like we just watched Homa. We just watched Aberg. Now he made three, but he, he made like a 40 footer. And it's like, those are the shots that Scotty, no one can just seem to hit good. And then Scotty just hits it close. And then what do you know? He basically hold it out, had like a tap in foot for a birdie on nine. Well, and that is how like the firmness of this golf course this week made it so, um, you know, so lack of a room for air because I think Max carried it probably a yard, maybe four or five feet past where Scotty carried his shot and Scotty having 85 yards in or 95, whatever obviously helped, but Max probably carried it four or five feet past where Scotty landed his. And Max has a 30 footer that he has to just tickle down the hill. And Scotty has a tap in like almost holds it. So there's just no room for air with how firm these greens were. And Scotty is the ultimate like distance control machine. He hits his number every single time. And that was like Johnny Miller back in the day. I think it is crazy, but so many people fall in love with starting their ball online and keeping it online and their ball flight, this and that. But distance control was such an underrated factor that a lot of people don't think about. And Scotty is so good at it. And like Johnny Miller in his prime said, if you gave me a yardage, I could hit it within a yard on either side of it. That makes such a difference for these dudes when you know the numbers you're hitting, like nine, the approach on nine, perfect example. Um, the approach on 12, perfect example. When you can't miss three yards long, like the, the, there was, it was death by inches for so many of these dudes where it's so close to being fine and it ends up dead. So, you know, it, it was just a, Super, super fun week. Um, it sucks that Scotty, you know, ran away with it in the end. We kind of had a feeling it was going to happen, but uh, it, it was just fun to see these dudes grind, 
and struggle. We had eight dudes under par the entire week. So I don't remember the last time a Masters was this tough, and it was fun to watch. I mean, how good do you think Max Homa has to feel about, you know, going forward in majors? Yeah, I mean, he was one of the guys that, you know, he had the great quote yesterday. He's like, I got to remind myself I got that dog in me and go out there. And yeah, he shot 73, but he has, he's been a major laughing stock his entire career. Like he struggled to keep his card for a long time. No one knew who he was. Then he became super famous on Twitter. Then he started winning and became, you know, a Ryder Cup participant last year. So his career is definitely on the up trajectory, but the guy's 33 years old. And I think this was by far his best ever finish in a major. And of course he's never won one. So I feel like he's got to have a lot of confidence going forward in, you know, events that he can win because everybody thought like he had a chance last year at LA country club. And then he wasn't even, I don't think he made the cut. So I feel like a guy like Max Homa has got to feel good about this. Um, Ludwig O'Bear obviously has to have a ton of confidence in seeing Augusta for the first time and, and being solo second. I mean, you look at some of these scores and it's just insane how many then, guys are well, over then, par. Right. Well, then you look at a dude like Tommy Fleetwood who still has yet to win on the PGA tour and he's contending at a major, like he is the ultimate, like you don't know what's going on there because it feels like he should have won at least a handful of times already on the PGA tour. Uh, we see Max uh, showing Scotty some love. I respect that. Um, God damn, I, I just wish Max could have got it done. I I bet on him. <coughs> excuse me. Um, I bet on him like three holes in today. I just had like a a feeling. Um, but shout out to Max. What a what a good finish. I think there's quite a few dudes that feel good about majors going forward, but. You know, it's Scotty's throne until somebody can knock him off. He's just too good right now. Yeah, I got Scotty even money today with a little boost. So um, I took it. I was like, uh, if I'm going to watch him win it, I might as well take it. Let's talk real quick about the week Neil Shipley had. Dude gets to be, he's the low am, only am to make the cut this year at the Masters, and then gets to play his final round with Tiger freaking Woods, who the last time Tiger missed the cut at the Masters, Neil Shipley wasn't even born. Like That's insane. It, it's crazy. Oh, Tiger making the cut. That's another shout out. 24 straight sets that record. Um, but Neil Shipley, I don't know. I can't imagine a better week for a kid that's just getting it. He's getting his graduate degree over at Ohio State University, unfortunately for him. But playing a Sunday round at Augusta with Tiger Woods and like his buddy who's on the bag, just one of his high school friends. And you're you find yourself in like three years caddying in, at Augusta National with Tiger Woods next to you. I can't imagine the week for that, that kid. Yeah. He, uh, obviously you said he's an Ohio state product and he was wearing golden bear, uh, gear, which is obviously Jack Nicholas is an Ohio state guy as well. So that was actually kind of a cool connection, but I don't know if I've ever seen a golden bear polo on the PGA tour or, you know, in an event like this. So that was pretty fire to have a, a guy like, uh, Neil Shipley. And he actually was competing, uh, there for a bit going into, I think he, he was under par and, oh, here he is. I think, uh, so he played in the USAM. I think that's how he got through. I, that's how he got his master's exemption. Um, and one of our, our former golf kids on our golf team, shout out Parker Goodrow. He was working at Cherry Hills when they had the USAM there this last year. And he said that everybody loved him. He was such a cool dude. And just like everybody was rooting for the guy. So, uh, he's just, he's a little bit of a thicker boy, so I can appreciate that. And, uh, he's got some crazy lettuce on him as well. So you can't really go wrong there. Yeah. And now he's sitting next to Scotty Scheffler and John Rahm in Butler cabin with Jim Nance after playing 18 with Tiger Woods. I don't think there's a better day for a kid than what what's happened to him right now. No. And he, what is up with his eyes? He's, his eyes are floating all over the place. Like he, <laughs> he keeps looking over to the right. Like I, what the fuck is he doing? He's, <laughs> he, he, oh no this poor kid he, he's gonna he get absolutely like, roasted he's all googly eyed like his fucking <laughs> eyes keep... dude i don't know if he's see, like what's behind the camera but... on, dude it it looks like somebody's getting fucking there's got to be something going on back there the way he keeps peeking over to the right it's throwing me for a loop <laughs> well 
Uh, yeah, so now it's just a green jacket trade backsies. Ra- Scheffler gave it to Rom last year. Rom's going to turn around and give it right back to him this year. That's pretty wild to think about. Maybe maybe Rom's like, I expect that uh, expect that back next year. Another John Rom, uh, real quick, we haven't talked about him. It's hard to win back-to-back. Like Nobody really goes back-to-back at the Masters. So uh, I can't wait for next year because that just means Scotty's not going to win. I'm already... We're on to 2025. I nobody's gonna bet Scotty. I'm not betting Scotty. I never. I'm at the point where I see like plus two or three hundred odds on Scotty, and I'm like, that's pretty good odds. Like I, <laughs> I should take those. Yeah, exactly. It makes I, me fucking sick to think that, but I'm like, oh, for him, you know, relatively speaking, um, it's like betting on the fucking the bulls in the nineties. Like you feel like whatever odds you get, it's pretty well money. So yeah. The only guy to beat the guy in his last four events is Steven Yeager. <laughs> like that's yeah. just, that's just golf for you. Yeah, exactly. Fucking Yeager bombs out there <laughs> taking down the, Oh my God. Scotty's hairline is just, th- he's got the hard comb over. What's just up with wait, all these dudes? Wait till he has this kid, dude. He's going to be so much grayer. I can I, feel I, it. I my, want my baby monitor is actually going off as we speak. I will, I will say that if Scotty Scheffler shaves his head, I will actually like him more. Shaved he, head with the beard. Yes, if he goes shaved head with the beard, I, he, I will not like him until he shaves his head. <laughs> all right. Well, let's let's wrap it up on that. We appreciate you guys all tuning in to Big Drive Energy. We'll be back live Wednesday from the studio, talking a little golf, a little Masters hangover. I'm sure there's some other stories that will come out of this week, but we appreciate you guys all tuning in. If you haven't, clicked that thumbs up button on the YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube, Big Drive Energy Golf. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Big Drive Spence. He's on Twitter at Big Drive Mitch. We appreciate you all tuning in. Enjoy the rest of this Masters week. We've got a little bit of Sunday scaries, but we've got three more majors coming up. PGA championship here in May. So we'll be there for all those. Come join us on the YouTube. We're out. Peace. Peace. We all silly like the mayor. 